I don't know if anybody's there, but uh, I don't know. Can we test the sound there quickly? Anybody there? Okay, well, that's good. I just need. Oh. <laughs> okay, so uh, th I'm new to this whole streaming process, yeah. Uh, I guess there are some people watching. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to figure this, this stuff out before I get started. So, um, yeah, I hope you can all hear me. Hear me okay. Uh, just give me a sec. Okay, well, I guess uh, I guess I'll just have to start. Um, yeah, okay. So I'm just going to start. I'm probably going to lose uh, some of my material, but uh, anyway. So, um, yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Royden James. Uh, I am the founder of Upcard. 
And I just want to thank everybody who's taken the time to come and uh, listen to me uh, talk on this live stream. Um, yeah, and I'd like to just thank uh, Elizabeth from Raising Beautiful Minds uh, for the opportunity to talk about uh, Upcard and this uh, this project that we've been working on for a little while. Um, it's it's always good to to be able to share with uh, with uh, people who are willing to listen. So. Um, so I guess I'll start with a little bit of a backstory as to how we came up with the idea. Um, for those of you who don't know, Upcard is an app that we've created to help autistic people, um, their families and their caregivers with, uh, with things like communication, tracking and planning. Um, I'll get into a little bit how we got to the point that we decided that we actually wanted to undertake this as a project, but uh, I'll give you a little bit of a backstory. Um, so um, I'm originally South African. I currently live uh, with my wife and my six-year-old son in Sweden. Um, we live in a town called Uppsala, which is slightly north of Stockholm. Um, I've been here for nearly 10 years. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, my six-year-old son, um, he was diagnosed with autism at around about the age two and a half, I'd say, between two and a half and three. Um, and uh, ever since then, we've been sort of, yeah, dealing with the, the, the ins and outs of, uh, of autism on a daily basis, So, uh, which is partly why we ended up uh, creating this product. So, um, yeah, so a little bit about me. I'm a qualified industrial designer. Um, I've never really been a programmer, but um, I guess when you find the need or the will, you, you find a way to do it. And I've been largely um, responsible for, for creating the app from the ground up, um, along with uh, my my son, obviously, who's the, the primary tester. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Um, just in case anybody wants to know, if you've got any questions, please just ask at any given point. I'm happy to answer the questions. I think it's always best to just answer a question as soon as it pops into your head. So uh, feel free to ask me anything at, uh, at any given point. So um, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of a, a dance around here because uh, I can't actually share my screen. So I can't really show you the material that I wanted to, but um, I'm gonna, I'm going to start with something here. So when we, around about the age of two years old, when my son was two years old, we, we noticed little things that, uh, that were slightly uh, not quite what we expected. I mean, we were new parents, but there was little things that we didn't quite think were, let's say, normal. Uh, and things like he didn't mimic, he wasn't trying to communicate with us, uh, things like, uh, he wasn't looking us in the eye, that kind of stuff. So we kind of noticed that there was something quite uh, quite clearly on. We noticed that there was something that we needed to at least figure out what it was. Um, so we went to our local uh, healthcare provider and we went through a bunch of uh, the usual tests. Like we started with uh, hearing tests. We went to three hearing tests, I think it was. We went to psychologist evaluations. We went to... Uh, doctors evaluations all sorts of stuff and eventually we managed to get um, uh, get our son diagnosed um, and the, the official diagnosis I think was um, autism within uh, within the youth with an unspecified um, uh, what do you call the disability but uh, basically he's now six he's largely nonverbal um, he, he started to, to talk a little bit but um, yeah, once we had uh, we had the diagnosis, we eventually now knew what we were dealing with, and we we could figure out what we wanted to, or at least put a plan together so that we could uh, do something about it. So um, luckily, we're in Sweden. Uh, I don't know what it's like in the rest of the world, but uh, we've been lucky enough to be uh, in one of the best places in the world uh, with support wires and things like that. So. Quite early on, we were advised to go on a course, uh, a PICS communication course, because at that stage, he was over the age of three and wasn't showing any signs of, of speaking. So long story short is we went on a course uh, and uh, it just absolutely blew our minds. Like uh, PICS was something that unlocked um, language for us and we were now able to not only 
give him what we thought he needed, but something that he actually wanted. He could ask for oatly chocolate milk and he could ask for cookies or uh, crisps or whatever it was. So for us, it really was a turning point. Um, the only thing that really got to us was that the process itself was super archaic. It was really, really dated, uh, although the, the, the system itself was really good. The process of creating these cards, and I can show you here, is um, it gets out of hand pretty fast. Um, we've got uh, our umpteen different versions of these cards. They're lying all over the place. I think you can see behind me here. They're on the fridge. They're everywhere. But you you tend to not have them when you need them. So, um, which is why it kind of sparked the idea that we would actually see if we can do a digital version of the app at that stage. We we didn't really we didn't really know what was out there, and we didn't really know just how much stuff was out there. So we kind of dove head in. You know, I, I think it's kind of our thing. You know, we just dive straight in, and we just we just did it. So we decided to create the app, but at least make it for him. It wasn't for anybody else. It was just for us to to find a way that we could connect. Um, and uh, so we started, started with the apps or the, the basic principles. And quite quickly, we, we, we learned that this was a, a way for us to, not for necessarily only for him to communicate with us, but we found that it was a way that we could communicate with him. So if, yeah, uh, it's, hard, it's hard to show you, but um, so if, if you take Pex as, as the basic form of PEX. You've got a bunch of picture cards. Uh, for those of you who don't know what it is, it's a bunch of picture cards where you could build sentences and basic sentences that you can use to communicate with somebody. Uh, there's a long process. You can read about it. There's a lot of material online. But um, once we had managed to replicate these cards uh, digitally, uh, we found that we could use them in different ways. So we could start using them within his visual planner. We could now start using them within um, what we were tracking in terms of his food. We could now start using it to, to share information with, uh, with his teachers, with his, uh, um, with his um, special education teacher when he, when he goes to school. So, um, so in, in this process of creating this app, we found that nothing out there really did that. There was a lot of other apps out there that were either just very, very basic uh, you could communicate with a bunch of pictures, and that's all it did. Um, then there was a couple of trackers here and there that track mood and stuff. But we found that um, if you think about autism, uh, or at least our understanding of autism, is that the spectrum is not this linear line. It's not good and bad. It's um, it's it comes down to sort of five five major things and. Um, so the way we look at it, at least when we're, when we're creating functionality within the app, we try and understand or try and always think about these five things like uh, language, motor skills, perception, executive functioning, and sensory. So um, if we take these five things, I'm not, we're not experts in diagnosis, but we found that this is one of the best ways to explain it, at least within our case. Um, and our son battles, obviously, with language. He has a, a little bit of difficulty with fine motor skills. Um, he has some issues with perception, especially in strange situations. Uh, he has issues with executive functioning, which is essentially taking bigger tasks and breaking them down into smaller ones um, and understanding what's, what's going to be happening through the day. So um, he has challenges with that. And then, obviously, with sensory um, when it comes to food and with sounds and things like that. So um, so what we wanted to try and do was create an app that was able to take in all this information from all these different things and give us insights into, into those little moments in between everything else. Because as parents, um, I would imagine anybody watching this who is a parent of a kid who or not a kid, a teenager, or, or have somebody in their, in their family who has these challenges that, uh, yeah, that you, you're so busy living your life that you, 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 you tend to forget that you can optimize on, 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 on little things and it often takes time. So we wanted to create an app that gave you insights into those little moments, which could then tell you, say, hey, maybe you should try this. It could possibly improve something else. So, um, 
So when we started taking these cards and using them in different scenarios, and we used a card for communication or we use it within planning, we could now see how often he was using a card within planning or how often he was talking with a card. So it gave us the ability to really understand his development and then also make us realize that we were actually making some progress because sometimes as parents we feel it just butting your head against the wall, you know, and it's, it's sometimes tough. Um, it's, it's nice to know that you're moving forward and you're doing something that's at least getting you to your end goal. Um, yeah, so, um, so I'd like to try and uh, show you a little bit about, you know, about how, how we, we use, uh, use the app. Um, I'm going to have to show you a little bit like, like this. Let's see if I can get the, uh, this is ah. okay. So this <laughs> this is not working. Oh no. Okay, so I'm gonna have to try and do it like this. Um, okay, so basically, like I said, the app is based off of picture cards. So if we go into uh, into his list, this is actually my son's data. So um, so what what UpCard does is it allows you to create a whole bunch of cards. So this basically just gives you um, the ability to create his visual uh, vocabulary. It's essentially taking this and turning it into a digital format. So the nice thing with, with UpCard is that um, we wanted it to be a tool that he could communicate with anybody. So when, when my son goes and visits his grandfather, his grandfather has, uh, has the app installed on his phone. Um, my wife has it on her phone. I have it on my phone. Um, our son has, I think, maybe three or four devices. It's installed on every one of those um, devices. So what we wanted to do was as soon as we added this card that everybody had this card so that we didn't have to run around chasing everybody saying, hey, have you got this card? Have you got this card? You know, so... So we made it so that as soon as you added a card, everybody who was connected to the account had this card and he was now able to communicate with you, possibly even on your device. So we were breaking down the barriers between who had what and who had the keys to what. So, so that's essentially how you do it. It's quite easy to do. Um, we've added a whole bunch of icons, make it a whole lot easier for you, but you can quite easily go in and you can choose to use a camera. You can use, uh, oh, of myself so there you know if I wanted to create a card of myself I don't think I'd do that but um, you can use pictures you can use the camera you could use some of the icons that kind of stuff so we made it so that you could um, you could create a card as fast as possible because we found that maybe we'd be sitting in a, in a restaurant and he ate something for the first time and we wanted to quickly create that a card so that we could use it on a later basis. But then we had to go home and print it out, laminate it and put it into his book. By that stage, he had totally forgotten about it, which was the limitations to this. Surely, it, I mean, it does have no battery and it lasts forever, but it's just we lost those moments which we could capitalize on. So we made it as fast as we possibly could. So once, we, once you've created all those cards now, um, you can use them. So within UpCard, uh, like I said, we started based off the PEX communication system, and I'm not going to go into that too much right now, but PEX is basically where you create a sentence. This is my son saying he wants to go and jump on the trampoline. So um, so we've got two ways of, to, of communicating within, within UpCard. We've got phrases, which is essentially this, and then we've got the grid system, which a lot of other apps have. So we still use, we still very much use the, the, um, the phrase system. So you use the, the speech bubble and he can quite quickly say, I want one piece of candy. So, um, so we wanted it to be super, super quick so that he could build a sentence. He could ask for anything that he wanted at any given time. So a lot of this UI that we've tried to build in here, and this is us using or working very, very closely with our son and testing, is that a lot of the functionality we actually stole from YouTube because we watched him using YouTube. He knew a lot of the, the, the user interactions, which were like swipe interactions and that kind of stuff so that we could 
create something that he already knew how to use that was instinctive for him to to kind of just pick up and and use so um yeah so he can say yeah um save some time you know so alec uh, he can build whatever he wants and he uses this on quite often actually to to actually get things that he really shouldn't have so um so this has really given him the opportunity to voice his mind and what he wants to do at, at any given point so now also when he goes to school and he could be standing there staring up into the ceiling and people think he might be sort of zoning out but the teachers can now walk up to him and say like alec what do you want you know what are you thinking about and he can quite quickly say like i see an airplane which he never used to be able to do so for us this has been super super amazing um so yeah so um so that's if we take the the, the basic functionality of communication uh wait let me show you actually the uh the board structure so um so that was the phrases and then we've got boards uh, and Boards are essentially a grid. You, you put together a bunch of cards uh, that might be used in a particular moment. And then from there, he can then, or whoever it is, can then communicate as and when they feel they want to. So we've got one here, which is built for food. So we use this when we're sitting around the, the dinner table and we can ask him, well, what do you want to drink? And then he can say like, I want uh, milk or I want uh, water to drink. So, um, yeah, so this is just a way for him to have the way to communicate freely and not be sort of sort of tied down to sort of that phrase format that uh, that PEX tends to have. Although we do think, or I at least personally think that um, the the phrase format is a good grounding, a good way to learn, you know, sentence structure and so on and so forth. But this just gives him the opportunity to be a little bit more free and a bit more expressive. So um, also creating a board is again, really, really simple. Uh, same process as creating a card, creating a plan, whatever it is. You can choose from any one of these cards um, and you can just build a board. So once you have the cards, you can, you can create a board based on anything and you can have multiple cards and you can have cards in multiple boards. So um, it's really, really versatile. Um, so yeah, so that's the the communication within uh, with with an app card. So the next thing that we wanted to get to was was something that we we battle with, um, not so much anymore actually. Uh, is um, is executive functioning or planning? So uh, let me give you a little little bit of an example. I mean, we live virtually in in the uh, Arctic Circle, which to me is is super strange, but. Um, during the winter, um, we we had to swap out his shoes because now obviously he has gotten bigger and his shoes are now not fitting him anymore. So the next morning he had to put on a different pair of shoes. Now, if you're not uh, if if you're not familiar with this this moment, then it's very hard to explain. But at that moment, we had to put on a different pair of shoes of which he had never seen before. Our mistake. Um, and at that moment, we had no way to communicate that the issues were still shoes and he was still going to school. But, um, yeah, one of us had to stay at home and we couldn't go to work. And, you know, so it just escalated very, very quickly. So if we had the opportunity to show him that, hey, this is just a different type of pair of shoes and everything else following the shoes is as normal like you would have done it every other day, it probably would have been easier for us to do. So. Now, when we use the visual planner, um, let me show you quickly. Um, we can create and plan his whole whole day. So we can put, so if we take this one, for example, this is what he does at school. Um, we can create steps that he knows when and how to follow, and he gets to then flip them. So, um, so the reason that we've done this is that we've used his language as the basis for everything that we do. So when we're creating a plan now, we're actually using words that he knows, not throwing in some random stuff, random images from all over the place. These are words that he knows that he is familiar with and he can use and we can use to communicate with him. So, um, so when you when you're creating a plan, you can set certain days that it's on. You can set a reminder so that it just it goes pling. I think our house, like 
reverberates with with a pling from a, from a plan when it's bath time because it's on everybody's device, um, and then he knows exactly what needs to be done. He knows that now he needs to go and bath or he needs to get ready for school. And as he finishes the steps, he gets to check them off. And if you see there, like anybody really, we, we like to check things off. It's, it's kind of part of our nature. We, we sort of make some progress, you know. So um, the plans are meant to be very, very simple, very easy to use and just fun to, to go through. And as you check off the steps, when you get to the end, you get a high five and well done. So, and then you can see across the day, this is today, this is yesterday and the day before. So um, let's see if we can get a bit of view there. So there we go. So he knows what's happening at any given point. Um, so yeah, there's no surprises now. Um, and let's just say if there was a plan that was happening at this given point, this little bubble over here will populate and show him that, hey, this plan is, is coming now. There'll be a little countdown thing happening there and he knows, okay, well, bedtime is coming in 10 minutes. And then it blings and he knows what to do. So what I think as, as, as a company or as at least um, Upcard per se is what we're trying to do is we're trying to create sort of frameworks that people can sort of build upon. So by creating a visual planner, we're not creating something to control anybody or a child or control our child. What we're trying to do is create a, a, a framework or a base that we can build upon. So if we can create a bath plan of three steps and maybe within a week's time, he's mastered those steps and he doesn't need that plan anymore. It's not about the plan anymore. Now it's about how can we expand on his day? How can we add more steps to it? Or how can we get him used to this functionality so that if we decide to one day maybe go to a birthday party, we can then show him the plan and he understands, okay, so this is a plan. This is something that I like maybe at step number three. I got to do step one and two to get to step number three. We can start expanding his world and not only keeping him within the confines of what he knows and what he's comfortable with. So, so that's kind of the vision of what we're trying to do, at least um, within planning, is to be able to give people to, to really expand the world uh, and um, I don't know, let, let the, their child or their family member at least experience more of the world, more of what, what there is out there, you know. So, um, yeah, like I said, for us, it's, uh, it's, it's been a game changer. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's planning. And, and the nice thing with planning is you can create, we have about 19 plans that we've pre-saved um so we've got things like if we're at the mall and we go to the toy store whatever it is so we can have them pre-saved ready to go and then if for instance we want to use one we just kind of swipe it and you say use now and you're ready to go so we can have these things pre-populated yes it's, we need to kind of think ahead and think what what could we need what might we you know want to try um, and then we can pre-save them. We can use them over and over and over, and we can share them with everybody else. So, like, for instance, this weekend, um, my son went to spend the weekend with his grandfather. We can quite easily then create a bedtime plan specifically for that situation so that grandfather knows exactly what to do. We don't have to write uh, a long list of stuff on a piece of paper that inevitably gets lost and, and yeah, so we can then just share it with them and, and everybody knows what's going on. And most importantly, he knows what's going on and he feels comfortable in that situation. So, okay, so that's, that's planning. Um, then, yeah, the next thing that, that uh, I'd like to show you is, is tracking. So, um, like I said to you, we've got these, these major things within autism that we're trying to address. And with our son, it could be different for everybody else, but... For our son, food is a very big thing. Um, he's what I think what we've dubbed, or I don't know if it's a it's a thing, but he has a thing called he eats the beige diet, which he only eats yellow stuff. And when we go into the list of cards 
you know, um, his food cards, we can see is things like bananas and pancakes and everything that isn't sort of in stark contrast or, or very sort of um, no colors. So vegetables are a no-go. Um, he doesn't eat any candy, but he only eats yellow stuff. So what we needed to then do is we needed to go to a dietitian and make sure that hey, you know, this kid is growing, he's growing really fast. Um, we need to make sure that he's getting all the nutrients and stuff that he needs. So, um, so we are advised to take a logbook. So what, what do most people do? Well, we grab a piece, we grab pen, paper, and we start logging. Uh, and then before you know it, it's just too much work and you fall behind and then all of a sudden you, you don't have the logbook anymore and, or somebody lost it or like our son likes to tear things. You could absolutely destroy the book and then we've, we've lost all that history. So, so we went into UpCard and we created a diary or a tracker as we call it now. And the tracker logs everything that he does during the day. So as long as we're uploading or we're using the planner or he's using the communication tool within uh, within upcard it tracks everything that he does so we can see today that um you know he's yeah he's done a whole bunch of stuff he's he got ready for bed um yeah we he sleeps with a nappy so he put on the nappy went to the toilet you know so everything that he's done today everything that is done in the planner gets saved into the tracker, which means that when we go to school, and sometimes there's a very, very short time where we can actually drop them off and we need to go and catch a train or we need to get to a meeting or something like that. This is a very, very good way for, for people to get an overview of the day. So if he wakes up and he's maybe sad, we can then say, we can log his mood. We can say like, today he was sad. Um, and then we can save it in, in, in this tracker. Then when he gets to school and he has his device, he's lucky enough to have his device at school. Um, the teacher or his special needs teacher can actually then pick up his device and say like, oh, okay, well at eight o'clock this morning, he was not so happy. Um, and then uh, let me show you here quickly. I'll put it on the, on the chocolate milk. Um, within every entry, you can, you can see down at the bottom here, this is very, very bad, apologies. We can then write a note. We can then attach a little note saying that he was sad because maybe he couldn't find a book or he couldn't find one of the toys that he wanted and stuff. So we can easily put that information there and that the teacher would then know why he was sad. And she can then tailor the day according to that and not have to start from scratch every single day. So, uh, yeah, we found that sort of very, very valuable. And I, I'll give an example of, um, of, uh, of some data that we've been tracking over, over a long time. Um, so we track his sleep. He's not particularly uh, had any issues with, uh, with sleep or anything like that. Um, but um, so let me just find that for you quickly. Um, yeah, so sleep sleep isn't something that uh, we've had an issue with, but um, it is something that other people do have. Um, so we have the ability to track things like medication. Maybe you take melatonin or something like that, and you want to then track sleep and see how it maybe affects your sleep. Um, I've got is a really good way to to just store all that information and then see it over time. So you can see here. Um, let me go back one month here. So. If I show you there, this is his sleep card. So that over there is his, the picture we use for sleep. And this is us. This is the amount uh, that we've tracked. We've tracked probably for the last year or so. So we have a lot of data that we can look back and see like, hey, maybe what's affecting your sleep and what's not. So um, I'll show you the dashboard as well where you can see things uh, together. But so, yeah, so the tracker is a really good way uh, for us to keep track of what he's eating, what he's doing, how often is he doing stuff. Um, we can also see his historic data on, um, on the plans that he's doing, so we can keep optimizing what he's doing. So if we take, for instance, um, the plan that he does in the mornings, we can see how well he's doing. We can see how many times does he finish that plan, how many times did we not finish that plan? What was it that possibly caused that? Um, and we can constantly learn by looking at this data over time. So, um, 
So I said to you earlier, what we were trying to do was create this framework that people could sort of build on and, and expand the world of their family member. Um, but what we're also trying to do here is to give people access to, to data and knowledge that they can sort of experiment within themselves so that um, maybe you can try something new, try a different bedtime, try um, maybe, I don't know, some, some other things, but now you can actually see in practice how it affects, um, you know, things over time. So um, another functionality within um, UpCard, I won't get into too much detail here, but is we've got a dashboard which allows you to track certain things and compare them. So now, I mean, this doesn't really make any sense, but um, you can track, for instance, sleep, and you can track it compared to, um, maybe something else. So if you had medication or a specific activity or that kind of stuff, you could add these to your dashboard and you could see them over time. So you could see, um, hey, you know, he's, his sleep is really suffering here and we could look back and we could say, hey, is it this? Maybe is it that? And we could experiment and start finding, um, maybe finding some solutions that might work for your individual uh, needs or, or, or a, a person's individual needs. Because I think, um, one thing that we've learned very quickly is when you're dealing with a spectrum, it's this wide, there's so many possibilities and everybody has a solution, but ultimately it comes down to the individual and the individual experiences and their own needs. So what we wanted to try and do is get to the point that it's adaptable for anybody and they can learn about their own data. They can learn what is affecting them positively what's affecting them never negatively but within their own context and not from outsiders just kind of shoehorning solutions kind of thing so um yeah so that that's in a nutshell we've we've got a couple of other uh, functionality uh, another couple of functions that we have here which we've got a timer like a, a, a countdown timer so let's say um we wanted to track how long he was doing something or we wanted to show him how long something would take. There's a visual timer that counts down. Um, you can set it, you can set it as a countdown. You can set it as a timer. So you could time things like meltdowns. You could time things like um, training. If you're doing any specific training, you could time. Um, we, we used this for when we were potty training him. Um, he was afraid of the potty, so we showed him that he only had to sit there for a couple of seconds, and then after that he started to understand that he only had to sit there for a little while. So this, again, is another way for us to communicate time to him, because what is time? You know, it's, a, it's as long as a piece of string, you know. So um, so this functionality allowed us to, to then show him time passing, which meant that he knew that there was an end to something. So... Uh, for instance, we were at a birthday party and he wanted to go to the playground, but we wanted to make sure that he at least took part in the party a little bit. So we set the timer for, I think it was maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes, and he sat there happily engaging, eating a couple of pop, uh, pieces of popcorn and such, because he only eats yellow to white stuff. But um, he, he now knew that he only had to sit there for a little while and then he could go and do his thing. And if we hadn't have done that, it, it probably would have been chaos for him. So, so this timer is just really a good way to, to, to just, just communicate and not make things a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. And then, of course, anything that you, you time with, you can save into the tracker and you can see that over time. So, like I said, what we did was when we when we potty trained him, we started with, I'm not kidding, one second on the potty. And he sat there for one second. And then we increased it to two seconds, then to five seconds, then to 10 seconds. And I think eventually we got to eight minutes. And I know it sounds a bit like torture, but we got to eight minutes. And then eventually he just went to the toilet. And it was smooth. There was no tears. It, it took maybe a couple of days and, and it just it just happened, you know. So we didn't have to force anything. The communication was clear. Everybody knew what was going on. And, yeah, it was it was great. Um, another bit of functionality that we added in here just to help teach new cards. There's a game here where you can just play the guessing game. What is this card? Okay. 
it can be. Um, it's just a way for us to actually teach him new cards. Um, it's just a little fun thing. Um, and then I, what I've found um, on, uh, in my searches, um, oh wait, there's a question. What age would you say is appropriate to start using the app? Um, well, it depends. Uh, are you going to be creating stuff or are you going to be using it? No, I'm just kidding. Um, I would say um, it could be pretty pretty early. I, I can't really say when would be the best time, but if we had the app functioning as it is right now and we we knew that he needed some form of help, at least in our case, he needed some form of help, we could have possibly been using it as early as two, two and a half. I mean, it all comes down to um, each individual and how, you know, what their dexterity is like, um, what their uh, sort of picture recognition, all of that sort of stuff. So I think it comes really down to the individual. But in our case, because our son is very visual and he cannot communicate verbally. He, he had a drive to communicate in another way. So I would say for us, it could have been as early as two and a half. Um, so, and then hopefully we create something that could also be used by people who have a hard time communicating that are, um, I don't know, 60. So we want this to be versatile, you know, for, for, for anybody. So, uh, we try to keep it as simple as possible. You can see if you get into the app as well, we've tried to remove a lot of distracting things. Um, it's usually color washed in one color. So if, if your child likes one specific color, um, you can you can choose that or the person using it might want one specific color. And then we re removed a lot of text and a lot of distracting things so that it's, it's very easy to focus on what you need to do, where you need to push and where you need to go. So... Um, yeah, so I think it, it could be relatively early. Uh, I hope I answered that question. Um, yeah, so uh, to, to get on to another, another bit of functionality, um, when we started, we, this is like gold uh, in a sense. Where do you find the pictures? Where do you download text images? And then a lot of apps charge a lot of money. Um, the app itself costs a lot of money and then the pictures themselves have sort of, sort of some licensing fee. And we were thinking about going down that route, but then we decided no, that is just not the way that we want to do it. So we have provided the complete app for free. And um, although we don't have all the pictures yet, we have started designing our own pictures. We thought that some of the pictures out there were confusing and we wanted to create our own pictures. So we've created a whole bunch of pictures that people can go in. Actually, they're cards. They're ready-made cards. You can go in and you can actually download them. So to get people started as fast as possible, because I've seen a lot of searches online where people say, hey, where can I get these pictures? I really need these pictures. So we've provided them absolutely for free. So if you go into, into the app, there's... Um, there's functionality or there's a, um, a menu item called resources. Um, it looks a little bit like that. Um, we've got getting started, we've got food, we've got some appliances, emotions, some nature and weather, some colors and a whole bunch of stuff. And we plan to expand this way, way, way more. Um, this is somewhere that I'm really interested in. We would like to get to the point that we have our own visual language pre-created so that people can get started as fast as possible and you have everything you need. So if, for instance, if you go into, into food, you can see here now I'm in the food section here. Um, we've got a whole bunch of cards here with apple, bacon, all sorts of stuff. So if you wanted a card and we had it, you could then just click on the one that you wanted and you just download it and you're ready to go, ready to use it. Um, the only catch is, and I think this is where people might have a question, is um, there's apps out there that use text-to-speech. Um, and some of them are okay, but those are usually the ones that are really expensive. And we've opted to not go with text-to-speech. We actually had the functionality in the beginning, but we just found that um, using recording our own voice on the card, for instance, worked way better. Plus, because we're dual language, we've got Swedish and English and every now and then we throw a bit of South African Afrikaans in there. Um, it was very hard to use text-to-speech and it, it, it really didn't work all the time. 
and it wasn't consistent. And when you're dealing with something like language and repeating and, and trying to get the language to or get somebody to, to really grasp language, consistency at least, we believe is key. So recording your own voice was a way that he could hear that this was me talking as a recording. I'm the one who records all the cards, so it sounds like me. But uh, we just found that was more effective. Maybe later down the line, there's some new technology that comes out that makes it uh, better. But we just found text-to-speech very limiting at the stage. At least for a small company like us, we couldn't reinvent the wheel. So, um, so when you're creating a card now, you can quite easily just, if I show you here, add a card. You can just record, you just press and hold and you record your voice onto a card. And then you can use that sound when he speaks with a card and you can even use it within a plan. So when he flips a, a step in a plan, it will actually then recite that word again. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a really good way for, for them to, to keep hearing the same words over and over in the same way. And, they, and at least our son has learned a lot of words in, in, in that way. So yeah, so that's, um, then we've got through the resources where we're trying to help people get started with cards. Then um, one request from uh, <laughs> from a parent was that um, that their kid was just way way too smart with the app, and he went in and he started changing his own plans. Uh, and although we we want to promote these people, uh, these uh, these individuals, and uh, you know, like you know, yay to them, power to them. We needed some functionality that could a limit them from from changing some stuff because you need to be able to restrict some things so uh, in the latest release we've added uh, what we call a parent lock but it's it's just a lock so that nobody can go in and actually edit anything so it's it's down at the bottom uh, I know you can't really see it there there's a little lock at the bottom there you select the lock and you just add a pin it's really basic four digit pin I'm just putting one two three four and then what it does is it just removes the menu items and, and that sort of stuff. So you can still communicate, uh, you can still use the planner, that kind of stuff, but you can't add, you can't delete, you can't create or, or um, edit, that kind of stuff. So the functionality remains there, but you you can't change anything. Um, yeah, it's it's just a handy thing when your little little guy is a little bit too smart for his, for his own good. So then you just press and hold, and then you can just unlock it like that. One, two, three, four, and we're locked and we're good to go. So um, then also on top of this whole thing is we want to try and be there and help people as much as possible because, you know, some people aren't uh, technically minded. Some people just don't have the time to learn something new. And we know, you know, throwing this into the mix of a day that's already possibly chaotic and busy with a whole bunch of other things. Um, we want to be there as much as we can and sort of hold hands and help people as much as we can. So we built into the functionality a way for you to communicate directly with me um, and my wife, Emily. You can post a question and we'll answer as fast as we humanly can, unless we're stuck in anything. But that, that's functionality directly in the app and you're talking directly to us. Um, and then we'll hopefully be able to answer your questions and get you started as fast as possible. So. Um, yeah um i wish i could show you a little bit more in a little bit more detail but it turns out i'm not so technically savvy but um yeah so that's a little bit of a rundown of of upcard um maybe i can do a stream again where i can actually show the app working and not have to sort of display it like this um and maybe we can get into some functions in a little bit more detail uh, maybe give you some examples of how we used it and how we've um, sort of yeah overcome certain hurdles uh, using it. So if you're interested, you can always uh, let Elizabeth know or reach out to us directly, uh, and we can maybe do a stream uh, on those uh, in a little bit more detail. Um, I don't know. Is there anybody else who has any questions? Um, I know I've rambled now for about 50 minutes. Um, I didn't think I'd be able to fill this time with content, but um, yeah. So, is there anybody who's got any questions?
I'll give it a couple of minutes, but um, uh, yeah, maybe something else I can add. It's also available for iPad, so you just install it on both, log into both, and then it shares data between them. Uh, another handy thing to know: we learned very fast. Uh, it need it works offline, so you don't have to be connected to the internet for it to work. Obviously, it needs to be connected to the internet to share to the other device, but uh, we were actually on our way to South Africa and realized that the app didn't work while we were on the plane, so that wasn't so good. So, But we've added that functionality now, so it works completely offline. You can use it for as long as you want offline, um, and then just sync to another device. You just have to go online. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, that's, I think that's my presentation done. Um, Thanks. There's no questions. Um, yeah, thanks for bearing with me. Thanks for the opportunity to to share what we've been working on, and hopefully we can do this a little bit more, uh, help some more people. Yeah. So, uh, any questions? Reach out to us by email. Uh, go to the web page uh, upcard.io. Um, there's a bunch of information there on some of the functionality. Um, we got uh, help dot uh, upcard.io we've got a couple of articles on how to do some stuff we we constantly adding new articles there so just keep your eyes peeled if there's something there that's missing let us know um yeah so i think i'm done so um yeah i don't I guess i'll say say goodbye uh, it's evening here so i'll say good evening from uh, from sweden hope to see you soon cheers Oh wait, one question right at the end there. Um, yes, it's it's compatible with Samsung. It works on iOS and on Android. Um, some of the devices are starting to get a little bit slow as they get older. So um, we've got a Samsung S6, I think, and it works fine. But some of the older devices do get a little bit slower. But um, yeah, works on Samsung. Um, Yep, it should work on Android tablets as well. So um, yeah, so it works on iOS and Android tablets and mobile devices. So any last minute questions before, before I end? Oh, great. Perfect. Okay. Cheers. Thanks for your time. Okay. Bye.